what an incredible problem to solve. I say that because this problem is super easy to understand. When you try to solve it, you understand what is tricky about it. And once you are finally able to arrive at the solution, you are amazed how small the solution is. So I will be going step by step along with some diagrams. So this commits to your memory and you will never forget it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see how you can approach this problem in a step by manner and then come up with a dynamic programming solution using memoization. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, we need to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement accurately. In this problem, you have a staircase where each step is representing some cost. So I have an array over here that is representing my staircase like this. And notice that all of these elements are representing the cost of each step. What is this cost? This cost simply means that once you pay this cost, then either you can move one step at a time or you can take a jump of two steps. So that is the idea. You have to make sure that by paying the minimum cost, you can reach all the way up to the top. And you are also given one more condition. You are allowed to either start from step number one or you can start from step number two. The goal remains the same. You have to reach at the very top. So how does this make the difference? Think about it. If I am starting from step number one, right? I will pay this cost and then I can either move one step or I can take two steps. If I move one step, I will land over here. Or if I take two steps, I will land over here. I still haven't reached the top. The top is defined by one more step above the last step. So let us say that I take two steps and I land at 20. So now if I have to move from over here, I will have to pay the cost. So I pay 20 and then where do I reach? I take one step and I reach at the top. So what was the total cost? The total cost was 30, correct? But is this the minimum cost? No, there is a better approach available. You remember that I can start from either the first step or the second step, right? So instead of starting from 10, what I can do is I can start from 15 as well. So once I am at 15, what do I do? I pay the cost, so I pay 15. And now I have an option available. I can either go to 20 or I can take two steps and I can reach the top, correct? So definitely I will want to reach the top. So what just happened? Just with a cost of 15, I was able to reach the top. So for the first test case, 15 is your answer. The input test cases can become very complex. For example, look at the second test case. I have a huge staircase and I will have so many options that where do I start and then how many jumps do I make? In this particular scenario, I will get the minimum cost if I start from step number one and then I start making my jumps in such a way that my cost is minimum. So from one, I will take a jump of two, then once again a jump of two, then a jump of two, then a jump of one and then a jump of one again. So in total, I will jump on three steps and all of these costs will be one. So the total cost to reach at the very top will become six in this case. So it is very clear that a greedy approach won't work for this scenario because we do not know how will I find the optimal path, correct? You cannot just look at the minimum cost and then move ahead. That will not give you a feasible answer. You need to come up with a certain scenario that you are finding the optimal cost. So this was the main crux of the problem. You just had to make sure that just reaching the step number 20, that is not your answer. You have to reach one step after it. Similarly, in this scenario as well, you don't just have to reach step one. You have to reach one step after it. So this is one scenario where most of the people face a problem and most of their test cases fail. So if this was your scenario as well, feel free to stop the video right over here and try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. How do you begin to attack this problem now? I won't bother into going into the brute force approach because over there you will have to find out all different combinations by which you can reach at the top. And that is certainly not desired. 
also a recursive solution will not be an optimal one because you will be performing all the calculations again and again. So let us try to take a step back and just understand what is happening in the problem. You have this particular staircase, right? And what do you want to do? You want to reach at the very top, correct? Now forget everything about the problem for a moment. Just keep in the fact that you can either take one step or you can take two steps, correct? So how can you reach the very top? Either you will be taking one step from this step number six, or you will be taking two steps from step number five, correct? There is no other way by which you can reach the top. Forget about how we reached up till here. Just focus on this particular part. How are you reaching the top? Either you will take one step from step six or you will take two steps from step five. Correct? Now you want to know what is the cost to reach over here. So how will you reach here? In the problem statement, what were you doing? After paying the cost for step number six, only then you can make a jump. Correct? Similarly, after paying the cost for step five, then you can make a jump. So no matter what, you will have to pay the cost of these particular steps. Correct? So if you are wanting to take one jump from step six, then what will be the cost? The cost will be whatever is the cost of step six plus whatever cost was required to reach up to st step six. Right? And similarly, if you want to reach from the top via step five, what will be the total cost? The total cost will be whatever is the cost at step five plus whatever cost you incurred to reach up to step five, right? So what do you want? You want a minimum cost to reach at the very top, correct? And you have two options available. Either you take one step from six, then this is your total cost or you take two steps from five then this is your total cost and you want the minimum cost. So what I will be doing is I will be taking a minimum of both of these values. So if this is smaller, I will choose this path. If this is smaller, I will choose this path. So this is the basic crux of the problem. Just pause the video over here and take a moment to absorb it in. What did we just do? We are saying that the minimum cost to reach a particular step n, that is this top step over here, this will be the minimum of two particular values. And what are these two particular values? The cost at n minus one th step plus whatever cost was required to reach up till over here. This is one segment. And this second part will be the cost of n minus two th step plus whatever cost you had to reach up till step number five, correct? So out of both of these options, whatever is the minimum, this will be my cost to reach at the very top. And this will be the minimum cost, right? So now based upon this idea, we can try to build up our solution from bottom up. And how will that look like? Just stay with me for a little while and everything will be crystal clear to you. So over here, let us just take a very basic scenario. I only have two steps available, 10, 15, and then a top. And I am standing over here and I have to reach over here, correct? So the cost to reach at the top, what will it be? You know that from this particular derivation, it will be a minimum of two particular values, correct? And what are those values? Let us try to fill them in. So the cost at n minus one, the cost at n minus one is 15. So I'm going to write down 15 over here and then plus of the minimum cost required to reach up till point 15. That means at what cost can you reach this particular step from the given problem statement? You can either start at step number one or you can start at step number two. So there is actually no cost involved to reach step 15. Correct. And similarly, there is no cost involved to reach step 10. So I can safely say that the min cost required to reach step number one is zero. And similarly, the min cost required to reach step number zero is also zero. So now when I want to plug in this value, n minus one will be one because n equals to two right now. And then this value over here will be zero. So basically top is n, 
15 is n minus 1 and 10 is n minus 2. And now we can plug in this second part as well. What do I have? Cos stat n minus 2. That means I will have 10 over here plus what is the minimum cost required to reach step n minus 2. This is again 0. So I will add a 0 over here. So this gives me a minimum of 15 or 10. So I get 10 as my answer. So this is just telling me that the minimum cost to reach step number 2 will be 10. And this seems true as well. Correct? Because think about it. If you are right over here, then you can either start at step 10 or you can start at step 15. From step 15, if you have to reach the top, you will take just one step. But the cost was 15. But from step 10, you can just pay this cost and take two steps. And then you will reach the top. So the minimum cost required to reach up to this particular point, this is 10. So this is how we are deriving and this is how we are memoizing our results. So based upon this idea, let us try to now take up the original test case and see how everything is fitting in. So over here, I have my sample test case. And once again, if you try to look at the staircase, it will look something like this. You have to reach this very top point, correct? And what you will do is you will build your solution one by one. And what have we done up till now? Up till this point, the cost was zero. Up till this point also, the cost was zero because you can start at either index zero or you can start at index one. And from our latest derivation, we found that to reach up to step three, the minimum cost is 10, correct? And where do you want to reach? You want to reach at the top. So in this scenario, the top is n and then I have n minus one and then I have n minus two. Now, once again, just plug in your values. You want to reach the top. The top is this nth position. So now I will populate these two particular blocks. So for the first block, what is the cost at n minus 1th block? The cost at n minus 1 is 20. So plug 20 over here. Plus, what do you want to add? The minimum cost to reach n minus 1. That means what was the cost to reach at this particular step? And that value is 10. We derived it over here, right? So plug in this value. And for the next segment, what is the cost at n minus 2? The cost at n minus 2 is 15. Plus, what is the min cost at n minus 2? The min cost at n minus 2 will be 0. Because to start from over here, you don't have to pay any cost, right? So this value is again 0. Now you get minimum of 30 and 15. And out of these two values, what is the minimum value? The minimum value is 15. So now you see how for this particular test case, you are getting 15 as your answer. So this is what we are doing. We are applying dynamic programming and we are storing all of our results. Correct? Just think about it. If your test case now increases, let us say you will add two more steps. Let us say I add this and I add this. And the cost of these steps could be anything. Let us say it is 7 and then 20 and then a 90. So now if you have to move ahead and then find out, okay, what is the cost to reach at the top? You will keep on applying the same formula, right? You just found out that to reach over here, the cost is 15. Now you will keep on equating. You will find out what is the minimum cost to reach at this particular step. And that will involve these two values. Then you will try to find out the minimum cost to reach over here. And that will involve these two values. And after that, you will find out, okay, what is the cost to reach at the top? And that will involve these two values. So that is why we understood our logic all the way from the very top. And then we started building our solution from the bottom to arrive at a very efficient solution. Notice that we are not performing all the calculations again and again. We are just going to preserve all of our values in this min cost array. Or you can call it to be a DP array. That is your choice. This is just memoization. So based upon all of this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this is actually working in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample staircase that is passed in as an input parameter to the function min cost climbing stairs. And what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create our min cost array or the DP array. This array is simply storing what is the minimum cost required to reach at a particular step. So 
Currently, my array is empty. And when it is initialized, it will be initialized with all the values to be zero. Correct? So basically, this is telling me that to reach step number four, the cost is zero because I can start at either the first step or the second step. And similarly, the cost to reach at step eight, this is also zero because I can start at the first step also, right? Now, all of these values are zero as well, but we want to populate them. And that is why the next step is actually starting a for loop, which starts at the second index and goes all the way up till the very last step. And in this loop, we are gonna update all of these array values. So we are gonna populate this value and it will tell me what is the minimum cost required to reach step number 15. And what I'm doing over here, just watch. We are applying the min function. So math.min and then we take the minimum of two values. So cost at i minus one, that is eight, plus of min cost i minus one, that is zero. And then I take cost at i minus two, that is four, plus of min cost i minus two, and that is zero. So I take a minimum of these values and then get a four. So I will put down four over here. So this array is now telling me that to reach step number 15, the minimum cost is four. Why? Because you can start from the zeroth step and then just take two jumps, right? So what will happen next? In the next iteration, you will populate this particular value and then you will go on. This loop will now continue on and you will fill in what is the minimum cost to reach step 16, then step 23, and then step 42. Once you are done with all of this, at the very end, you will find out, okay, what is the minimum cost to reach at the top? And this value is then returned as the final answer. This is the reason we created a DP array of size n plus one, because you have to reach at the very top, correct? The time complexity of this particular solution turns out to be order of n because you only do one iteration of the entire array and the space complexity of the solution is also order of n because you need that extra space to store your memoized array. I hope all of these diagrams and visualizations actually cleared the problem for you. I just want to say that I know you are very tempted to come up with a recursive solution to the problem, right? And Often you will think that, okay, how can I convert this recursive solution to a dynamic programming solution or some other way, but make sure that sometimes you will arrive at an efficient solution. If you just try to take a step back and try to plot your problem, just start creating some diagrams and see what is happening. Go step by step. And you might be amazed that you can come up with a very efficient solution. Another such problem that works on the same principle is climbing stairs. And if you haven't solved that problem, I would highly recommend you to go out and check it out. As for the video while going throughout, did you face any problems or do you have any other methods in mind by which this problem can become even simpler? Just tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.